Well, hello everyone! Welcome on CG Stream with Alice and Alex. And today we're really happy to introduce you our today's wonderful guest, our wonderful lady, Anna Podidvorne. Hi! <laughs> hello, everybody! Hi, guys! <laughs> it's finally, yeah. finally done! <laughs> yeah, finally done! <laughs> So, um, again, sorry that we couldn't have a stream last week, but again, it was like amazing story. Uh, I think we'll just touch it a bit today. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But um, I promise you that this stream will be really fun. And okay, let's, let's, let's just start with our uh, usual qu question. So, Anna, please tell a few words about yourself, how you just decided to become an artist, about the story becoming an artist and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, hello everybody again. Um, my name is Anna Podesworla and uh, uh, currently I'm working as a uh, lead concept artist at uh, the studio uh, called Flying Wild Hawk, uh, based in Warsaw, Poland. Uh, before that, I was a senior concept artist uh, in uh, CD Projekt Red and I spent there uh, about uh, four and a half years. Um, so, uh, yeah, basically, I work mainly for uh, video games, uh, delivering uh, concept art and illustrations. Um... <laughs> oh, well, so, um... it's always so hard to uh, talk about yourself. <laughs> um... Don't be shy. Easy. Uh, easy <laughs> for you to say. <laughs> You're like a social butterfly. <laughs> oh. Um... Okay, so um, uh, hmm. um, uh, before I started my career uh, as a concept artist, uh, I was studying to become an architect. Uh, that didn't <laughs> turn out the way I wanted, so uh, basically I switched um, uh, my occupations. Uh, but um, I was uh, passionate about art and illustrations, uh, basically uh, for how long I can remember. And uh, I discovered when I was in college that uh, concept artist is an actual job, that there are people who <laughs> uh, get to draw monsters and characters and uh, like cr crazy environments for a living. Uh, so uh, I fell in love, uh, managed to um, uh, get into the industry and been doing that ever since <laughs> and I'm very happy. <laughs> Okay, uh, so here will go some announcement that I told you about. Um, again, guys, uh, today's stream is in English because Anna doesn't speak Russian and me nope, and Alex sorry, doesn't guys. speak. Yeah, and <laughs> Alex and I don't speak uh, Polish. I mean, Alex speaks, but a little and he's shy. So please don't be surprised if you are an English speaker. Don't hesitate to ask your questions in English in the comments. И теперь по-русски. Ребята, сегодняшний стрим у нас будет на английском языке, как всегда, с иностранными гостями. Не волнуйтесь, запись стрима обязательно появится на нашем канале. Мы обязательно рано или поздно добавим к нему субтитры. Поэтому, пожалуйста, не удивляйтесь, что Анна, к сожалению, умеет разговаривать по-польски и по-английски. Я умею разговаривать по-английски и по-русски. И вот так получилось, что общаться мы можем только на английском. Если что, опять-таки, не стесняйтесь, задавайте свои вопросы на русском языке. Обязательно их зададим, и потом, возможно, кто-то в чатике будет помогать переводить на русский язык всем остальным. Да, okay. uh, маленькое замечание после этого. Ребята, которые писали про то, что у нас долго загружаются субтитры, пожалуйста, обновляйте ваши странички, потому что, например, вот стрим слоиш, который был там около года назад уже, ну, чуть-чуть меньше, к нему давно загружены субтитры, просто надо страничку обновить. Okay, I think we can continue. Sorry, sorry, Anna, for, <laughs> for this little announcement. Yeah, uh... So I think that we talked about how you became, like you said, you were art, uh, studying for architecture, being wanted to be an architecture. And my second question would be, how did it help your career right now? How it helps you in every day? What's probably the difference? What, I don't know, uh, difference in studying archi architecture, how it helps you nowadays with being a concept artist? Um, uh, actually, it's... Uh surprisingly uh, helpful uh, because um, at least for the um, uh, uh, architectural university I uh, was trying to get into and uh, later studied in, 
uh, the uh, entry exam uh, was uh, basically a drawing exam. So um, uh, before um, the, before college, uh, I spent the two years uh, in um, uh, drawing courses preparing for this uh, kind of exam, and uh, they. Um, Preparation for architecture gives you uh, a great uh, base knowledge about drawing because you're studying a very technical uh, side of drawing. You're drawing by hand on big formats. Uh, you're studying a lot of um, uh, perspective. Uh, uh, you are uh, um, instructed uh, in drawing very strict uh, geometries. Um, there, uh, there are not that many, uh, not that much time spent on uh, teaching uh, human or animal anatomy, but I guess that part uh, always came to me more naturally. So I was, uh, I was super happy to be able to uh, study the part that uh, I used to struggle the most. So uh, perspective and the, the super precise uh, side of uh, illustration. And uh, later uh, in uh, college, uh, we didn't uh, draw by hand that much. But uh, I guess there are many uh, kind of soft skills uh, uh, you learn. Um, so um, a bit of dealing with clients, uh, a bit uh, about um, uh, kind of uh, time management. Uh, I guess all of it uh, is very useful. And of course, uh, 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 concept art and architecture um, have uh, quite a bit uh, of the overlap when it comes to uh, learning uh, good taste, uh, uh, building uh, kind of uh, your uh, mental uh, li library uh, of um, images. So. Uh, yeah, I I don't consider it uh, a time wasted or anything. It, it's um, the studying of architecture itself uh, I, was very fun and very interesting. Uh, but unfortunately, the work of an actual architect uh, is <laughs> not the same what they uh, teach you in college. So it's uh, much more uh, paperwork, much more. Um, um, Kind of this whole crushing, uh, sad uh, sitting uh, by the table and just dealing with uh, changing laws and stuff like that, not actually creative, uh, super passionate work. Uh, so that's why I decided to uh, switch to concept art because that's basically 100% just uh, creating new words, creating new char characters, and just uh, hours upon hours of like super imaginative, creative uh, endeavors. And that's awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, no, no, everything is fine. Sorry, just... sorry, sorry. I, I just don't want to um, can I cr crowd you with like talking. <laughs> no, that's okay. We have two hours of talking. That's absolutely that's fine. That's actually a good point. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually Alex asks about work, your first job how you got it, how to break into the industry. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little about this one as well. How did you struggle to find your first job in oh, the okay. industry exactly? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, the, so uh, okay, so uh, okay, now we can start uh, right where we uh, left off. So uh, while I was uh, in college and uh, kind of trying to build my portfolio for architecture, I was also uh, uh, trying to find uh, a way to um, support myself uh, in a way that uh, I can uh, pay for my, my own expenses and continue uh, studying full time. Uh, so I started uh, selling uh, just simple commissions, uh, drawing, dr drawing commissions on DeviantArt. So <laughs> Nothing too ambitious, like um, cute, cute dogs, cute, cute, cute animals. <laughs> you can imagine what what kind of uh, illustrations are popular on DeviantArt. And uh, by that, um, while that was uh, allowing uh, me to uh, basically be uh, financially independent, 
And I, in the meanwhile, I was holding my drawing skills and um, um, simple, uh, but uh, good enough to start applying for junior positions portfolio. You know, uh, uh, by the time I um, knew that I didn't want to continue uh, with architecture, uh, I had a decent uh, size uh, portfolio that uh, honestly uh, wasn't very good. Uh, so um, uh, I knew that um, if I want to work in the studio, I definitely uh, um, was going uh, able uh, i was uh, at the time able only to apply for uh, intern or junior positions so uh, that's exactly what i did i applied to uh, to the project and uh, for a, a junior concept art uh, position uh, uh, at the time i applied uh, to uh, a smaller team uh, kena uh, not not the main uh, team uh, uh, work uh, Oh, maybe like that. Uh, at the time uh, when I was uh, starting at uh, to the project, uh, um, there were two titles in production. It was uh, Witcher Three: uh, The Wild Hunt, and uh, the studio was also experimenting with a smaller project. It was called Witcher: uh, The Battle Arena. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it was the first um, uh, time to the project was doing uh, a mobile game. So. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with my kind of crappy deviant art portfolio, I knew uh, I probably had, have a um, hard time trying to uh, apply to <laughs> work on a triple A, uh, uh, triple A game title. So I tried with a smaller team <laughs> doing mobile game, but uh, still in a bigger studio. And uh, my portfolio was uh, good enough to uh, get me in uh, as a junior. And uh, uh, slowly, uh, uh, starting from there, uh, I was uh, able to work with like uh, really amazing art directors, really amazing uh, senior artists, and uh, my it really helped um, uh, speed up my artistic growth. Just just being around and working uh, around um, super. Um, senior and uh, super knowledgeable people uh, in the studio. Um, the quality of the feedback this kind of professionals give you is obviously uh, miles <laughs> away better than what uh, you can possibly uh, get online. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, that basically that's uh, how uh, my uh, adventure with uh, creating uh, art for uh, video games uh, started. Uh, and I, I guess for uh, people listening uh, who are trying to get into the industry, uh, sometimes uh, that's kind of a smart option. Um, trying to find uh, maybe a smaller team, maybe a smaller project, sometimes uh, Maybe something indie, maybe uh, something smaller going on in a bigger studio, and uh, this is just, just uh, kind of uh, more approachable, uh, easier way to get uh, into the uh, bigger uh, studios, uh, because especially triple uh, A AAA titles uh, often don't uh, recruit uh, people without uh, already published triple A titles. So it kind of that's the problem, and um, you get the situation uh, when uh, to get a job you need uh, a previous job, and you cannot get the job uh, because you 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 kind of this uh, crazy cycle of not being able to uh, get into the industry. But uh, if you try, if you um, uh, really think about it and uh, target your portfolio. At, uh, for a specific uh, type of game or specific type of company, it's definitely possible to uh, get into the industry. And I just have to be smart about it and maybe uh, don't apply for the uh, biggest uh, AAA title in production if this is your uh, first <laughs> uh, video game job because uh, the, the competition might be uh, just unreasonably uh, hard. <laughs> Um, so uh, yeah, uh, in uh, to the project, I uh, spent, as I said, I spent uh, four and a half years, 
I was able to um, kind of rise through the ranks from, from uh, junior uh, to specialist and to senior. And uh, last year, I decided that um, since uh, to the break was my first video game um, job, uh, maybe it would be healthy for for me personally and for my career to try working with a different team uh, in a different studio. Uh, because uh, just uh, you know, starting uh, uh, when you get into the uh, kind of this industry and you kind of start uh, living around the uh, game develop game dev people, uh, you notice that. Um, Every studio is very different. It has very different culture. And sometimes uh, I feel personally it's good to uh, switch things around. So you don't, uh, just knowing the culture of a single studio might not be the healthiest thing because uh, different studios might uh, have a very different approach uh, to creating games. But yeah, in general, so the project uh, is. Uh, just great place to work. Uh, it was a super great adventure. Um, the people are really awesome, especially uh, for somebody who uh, uh, is uh, looking for um, a place when they can um, really grow uh, artistically. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> really nice memories. Uh, and um, I'm hoping all, all the next games <laughs> they produce will be awesome. <laughs> And now, uh, um, uh, uh, in the, my uh, current studio, uh, Flying Wild Hog, uh, I am a lead concept artist. Uh, we're working uh, on a game that is still unannounced, so unfortunately, I cannot uh, say much about it. <laughs> um, uh, all I can say is that um, it's uh, the most exciting project I've w worked so far. Uh, I really love the theme. I really love the art style, and I'm just having a blast there. Uh, the team is super lovely. Uh, it's great, <laughs> basically. <laughs> cool. So, uh, just before we move into another topic and another questions, what's most important for you in your working environment as an artist? Um. Uh, I mean, uh, to be honest. Uh, uh, from time perspective, what really makes or breaks a studio uh, are the people you're working with, uh, because um, um, so um, I, I'm not super picky uh, about the theme uh, of the projects I'm working on. Obviously, I have uh, my preferences. I love medieval fantasy. I uh, love uh, many um, kinds of sci-fi, uh, but uh, so uh, um, the, the reason uh, I uh, chose to work in the studio is because I kind of like the human interaction and uh, uh, because basically if I wanted to uh, pick and choose what, what I want to work on, I would uh, be doing more freelance or maybe go uh, become a full-time freelance artist. So for me, the the most uh, kind of enjoyable uh, part of uh, um, creating games is just being around like super um, passionate, super artistic people and just pushing uh, each other <laughs> forward. <laughs> Yay, I agree. Yeah, just don't don't be surprised that it takes a little to you know to continue talking because sometimes people just, uh, I mean. We need to not to understand that you finished your sentence and your thoughts, you know, to to, to continue having the, the dialogue and stuff. Yeah, j j just saying so that you wouldn't be scared. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I think that everyone is waiting for you to draw something. So probably yes. So probably let's 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 move on to the sketching. And Anna's minds. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> okay, yeah. so um, uh, since we are kind of um, mm, freestyle, I, I guess let, let's let's do something uh, that's uh, easy to for me. <laughs> so basically, a comfort zone. Uh, maybe let's draw some the uh, werewolf. Yay! <laughs> werewolf. 
It's, it's Halloween soon, right? It's just why yeah, not the world? Well, you're right. So we can say it's like this in the season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and before I start st start uh, explaining, like sometimes please just say what you're doing and why you're doing this, oh, because okay. we remember that you said that you're a pretty lazy person. <laughs> so when so when you're drawing, we know that you use some um, cheats and hints and stuff. Of <laughs> so if you can share those with our subscribers, so the sure. guys who's watching us today, it would be really appreciated. Sure. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, so uh, where to start? <laughs> um, oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I need to shoo away my doggo. No, no doggo, not now. <laughs> That's so cute. Uh, nice timing, doggy. <laughs> werewolf, we're drawing it's werewolf. Reference. Oh, just... <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> reference. It, it's, oh, yeah, it's okay. take it. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, basically, um, uh, I, I guess uh, um, I'll start with uh, a general composition. And uh, usually my sketches, uh, sketches start kind of, um, you know, messy way. I like to uh, zoom out a bit uh, when I'm doing the, the first uh, thumbnail. So uh, I guess what I have in mind right now is uh, maybe like two werewolves facing off uh, each other with uh, a bit of a, a crooked uh, horizon line uh, to uh, give the more um, maybe hmm, dynamic feeling to the whole thing. Uh, so. Uh, I'm already seeing that maybe the cropping I had before was not the most fortunate. So maybe something um, more uh, cinematic <laughs> would be in order. Um, yeah, but uh, as you guys uh, said uh, on uh, uh, artillery where we first met, <laughs> um, uh, I was talking about um, um, can I my ways of uh, cutting down on the workload uh, with illustration? And uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess uh, uh, I, I can uh, show you some of those. Because fortunately, um, I have some presentation slides. And I, recently, uh, I put together uh, step by step for a 3D total. So it will be very useful <laughs> today. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, um, so uh, uh, I, I'll start with uh, some uh, uh, so some sketch, and then we can go uh, into uh, uh, basically um, what can be done uh, to uh, maybe cut uh, on time a bit. Do we need a fog uh, of war? Uh, no, no, I, I don't need the fog of war uh, right now. But uh, <laughs> so uh, maybe you need just uh, actually. Ask. Just uh, for the whole maybe stream, that right? Would be a better order <laughs> of doing things. I, I can uh, show you kind of um, first my process on uh, previously uh, finished illustrations, and then we can kind of uh, sure. do uh, step by step so uh, the listeners know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I think we should just turn Fog of War when wow. you're showing yeah, the tips. Fog of War, when when you're showing tips, people. that's like a secret, like, okay, guys, it's pretty easy. Here, here's the <laughs> old, like, Two circles and then goes fog of war. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, um, um, <laughs> yes, okay. please continue. Yes, we're, continue. Yeah, we're listening. Uh, oh, okay, so, um, uh, not sure uh, if uh, we are uh, screen sharing right now, are we? Uh, if you want, I just uh, turn on fog of war. No, you, you can turn off the fog of war. It's okay, fine. <laughs> okay, okay. Because I think uh, the painting was like uh, uh, we draw on one stick, we draw on second stick, that's poof like magic, and the painting is done. And basically, that's how it happens. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, but uh, yeah, uh, you can turn off the fog of war. I'll show you uh, on a few examples uh, uh, how I uh, can uh, approach uh, creating stuff. So it, turn it now. Uh, turn, turn it off. We we can ah. screen share. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> they they all see in your monitor, so good <laughs> as they should. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Yes, it's all working. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, here uh, is an uh, illustration of uh, kind of this uh, happy uh, fun uh, girl I did some uh, time ago. And uh, I can show you uh, kind of step by step uh, um, uh, how, how, how this illustration happened. So uh, usually uh, I will start uh, with um, with either uh, black and white or uh, colorful uh, sketch or a time plane. So for example, here uh, um, in the uh, top uh, left corner, uh, I started with the idea. So uh, can I portrait and a swirl of something coming out of the character uh, with um, uh, light uh, coming from behind uh, uh, of the girl. Uh, later, I uh, can uh, sketch in this uh, uh, co comic, uh, simple uh, uh, way uh, the, the character, just not uh, thinking too much uh, about um, maybe anatomy yet, uh, just trying to catch the general mood. And uh, at that point, I was still not even sure if I want to uh, finish the illustration uh, cell shaded, uh, kind of with line art, uh, maybe uh, go into something more cartoony, or later um, try to uh, render it photorealistically. Uh, but uh, as you can see, uh, by the end, uh, I decided to go in the uh, photorealistic route. Uh, so uh, uh, basically, uh, I. Uh, here, I uh, at the next stage, uh, I uh, was trying to figure out uh, basically the anatomy and the basic light directions. Uh, here, um, uh, I kind of changed the idea, uh, the uh, swarm of uh, bugs uh, and butterflies coming, uh, flying off the girl's uh, forehead. Uh, at that point, I kind of wanted to stick to just one butterflies. The butterfly, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, usually I, uh, if uh, I decide to uh, uh, go into the photo uh, realistic uh, style of painting, uh, I will uh, spend a lot of time uh, painting in grayscale uh, because uh, I, some artists, uh, <laughs> I would say, are talented enough to be able to control both uh, values and colors at the same time. Uh, I definitely struggle with that. Uh, so I need to uh, break uh, those two into two separate uh, stages. So um, uh, basically, uh, I, I try to figure out uh, the basic light setup and values. And if that's correct, I um, paint in the color later. Uh, because, uh, yeah, at least for me, uh, if I try to uh, start with color uh, from the uh, very start, um, I basically mess up the values really bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, here uh, was the next stage. Um, so uh, um, I decided to uh, change her uh, expression a bit. Uh, so bleh, bleh, bleh. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, so um, I, I was uh, kind of putting more and more uh, detail. Uh, here I was not, um, I was deciding if I wanted to, uh, um, for example, make the girl uh, cartoony, uh, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, <laughs> if I wanted to make the girl photorealistic and uh, butterflies and the rest of the insects uh, more cartoony, uh, that's why uh, the butterflies are kind of chunky shape. Uh, so uh, I decided, at this point, I decided, uh, nah, let, let, let's go uh, for full realism. So um, um, from the uh, previous stage, uh, I was uh, kind of disliking the composition uh, in the uh, bottom. So I decided to uh, add hands. Um, I decided to close the girl's uh, eyes and um, basically uh, uh, started adding elements. Uh, parts of those are painted, parts uh, are uh, photo -bashed. So for example, uh, the horns uh, are uh, based uh, uh, basically on an overpainted photo. The same goes uh, for uh, some of the bugs. Uh, just, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, 
th those are uh, photobashed. Uh, I decided to uh, add uh, some textures. And uh, after that, uh, yeah, basically from this to this was uh, the, the jump was to uh, add color. The background is super uh, um, simple. It's basically just blurred dots, <laughs> um, which I do quite a lot with my paintings. It's kind of the illusion uh, of detail. So, uh, for example, in this image, the, the only detailed part are the girl's face, maybe some detail uh, on the hands, uh, the insects, and everything like her hair, uh, all of the background, uh, most uh, uh, of the horns, uh, all of that is very uh, heavily blurred and um, chunky. <laughs> uh, so, uh, kind of... Um, uh, sells uh, the image kind of sell, sells itself as being um, super um, uh, detailed and labor intense when in reality it's really not <laughs> uh, it uh, was not uh, as time consuming uh, as it kind of pretends to be <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah uh, what, what else I, I can show you um, uh, a bit uh, uh, about uh, in my process, uh, so uh, <laughs> um, so for example, uh, have some example uh, how I approach uh, uh, sketching uh, when I'm working for a client. Um, uh, the, the previous illustration uh, with the, uh, uh, was uh, personal work, so uh, I could uh, experiment uh, a lot uh, on the way. But uh, where when working for a client. Uh, I'm much more locked uh, into the uh, initial composition uh, of the uh, sketch, so uh, much less uh, experimenting. So uh, here you uh, here you have uh, two illustrations of uh, goblins I did for Magic the Gathering, and uh, on the sides are basically the sketch explorations I did for those illustrations. Um, for clients, I usually uh, deliver uh, at least uh, three. Uh, um, compositions and usually I work in black and white. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, well, well, uh, yeah. Wait, I, I will oh. zoom through uh, some stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, basically, um, uh, as I said before, I usually uh, deliver uh, three um, uh, um, compositions. And uh, right now uh, we are uh, in a, a, a presentation uh, I, I uh, showed in artillery and here's uh, AFCD <laughs> uh, because here I have um, prepared materials, so that's very convenient. And this is my favorite slide. Uh, I title "I am lazy," so I can show you uh, guys uh, two ways uh, in which I uh, cut out. Uh, I cut uh, the time uh, of uh, creating illustrations, so it's more manageable and uh, yeah, <laughs> easy. <laughs> so, for example, um, uh, I show you some sketches, and but sometimes, uh, for example, here, uh, I was asked to um, uh, create a, a illustration of a werewolf. Uh, I created uh, this sketch. The art director unfortunately uh, didn't um, uh, like it as much as I did. They picked a different one. So I went with a different illustration. Uh, sometime uh, later, I was asked to uh, paint a work. <laughs> so uh, uh, <laughs> I tried um, to uh, kind of um, adjust <laughs> the previous composition <laughs> to be able to reuse it. I really wanted to paint it. And unfortunately, uh, the main art director came and uh, foiled my plans again. <laughs> Um, sometime later, when the art director uh, forgot my initial sketch, uh, I was asked to uh, draw a character. This time, great success, I was able to uh, draw the composition I want. <laughs> so uh, this is basically my way of saying that at some point, um, after uh, spending a few years in the, in the, in the industry, uh, I explored uh, kind of so many uh, themes and so many uh, illustrations and concepts. Uh, at some point, uh, the, the themes tr 
uh, start to repeat. So uh, I, if I really enjoyed some kind of composition, uh, I, I really try to reuse it, <laughs> able to uh, paint the idea, kind of reskinning the the illustrations. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I guess the, uh, oh, uh, uh, here you have some examples of the difference of how I approach. Um, um, uh, sketching uh, when I'm sketching uh, in house and when I'm sketching for outsource. So uh, here are some illustrations from Gwent when I was working in house. So the sketches are much more uh, simple and um, can I assume that the art director will trust me to uh, deliver um, the result that they want. They personally know me, and uh, I don't. I don't when working with art directors that. Are I've worked uh, for some time. Uh, I cannot. Um, uh, we trust each other to uh, kind of correctly guess what I mean with my sketches. But when working with um, uh, new clients or outsourced clients, uh, as shown here, I usually uh, try to put more detail in, uh, just so uh, the person doesn't have to guess what I might have meant <laughs> by the sketch. Red, black. Uh, this is not interesting. Wait, 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 wah! <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, I just don't want to uh, kind of go through a whole uh, presentation uh, because uh, I, I guess it's not, um, it, not all parts are uh, relevant. Uh, so, um, oh, yeah, so. I just this, cut it out. <laughs> thank you, Alex. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> um, uh, wait, we, we can uh, go through uh, a part that's, uh, a, a, again, um, useful to people. Mm -hmm. oh, I know. I can show you this. Uh, so, uh, Alex, you can release the fog of war. <laughs> there actually was a question if you're using 3D in your yes. art. So that's uh, I do, uh, and we'll uh, uh, come to that. So, uh, for example, uh, here, uh, uh, I also use uh, what I like to call 3D for stupid people. <laughs> so uh, I own a few, uh, like, possible uh, dolls for artists just to uh, kind of um, explore the sketching phase uh, faster. So basically posing them. Oh, my God, what is my dog doing? Oh, okay, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And um, yeah, and um, here you have a few examples of uh, how far uh, basically I, I sometimes go uh, into uh, uh, drawing uh, just just in uh, grayscale. So basically, I finish the illustration in grayscale, light colors. And uh, oh, um, here are a few examples of works uh, I, or, that were based. So uh, while wor working on Gwent, it was super convenient that we had access to um, the engine of The Witcher 3 with all of the uh, really great quality uh, 3D assets. So for example, uh, those three guys uh, are uh, basically exported from the straight out of the engine. Uh, usually, uh, I don't. Um, so the way I used to do it uh, was um, I didn't pose the characters. I basically uh, just, uh, uh, exported the the files in uh, T poses and uh, just took the parts that I need. So usually faces, details, uh, pieces of clothing. So uh, the first illustration is uh, illustration of Oliard, who has uh, like super detailed. Um, clothes that would take ages to try to paint in all the details. So uh, yeah, th th that's uh, 3D based. But uh, the one thing that uh, I don't like to do with 3D is to uh, um, use the light that, um, so basically I don't lead the, uh, the models. Uh, I paint in the light manually uh, uh, because for me, that's the one thing that uh, I, I really have struggled to cover up uh, illustration uh, is the kind of synthetic, uh, a bit soulless uh, 3D light. 
So uh, I try to, uh, at, even uh, if um, the 2D provides me uh, with uh, all the detail uh, and um, kind of anatomy I might need, uh, I try to uh, at least paint in uh, the light manually so it doesn't feel um, super synthetic, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, here's uh, another example of super simple uh, 3D uh, I used for one of my illustrations. Uh, so um, here I uh, literally spent like 30 minutes uh, to build uh, a simple uh, cog uh, mechanism uh, in SketchUp. And uh, because to paint it manually, uh, and I would be painting the ass uh, because this would. Uh, had to so uh, to uh, build something like this in 3D, um, super simple because that's a lot of repetitive uh, simple shapes. But to paint it by hand and not to mess up the perspective uh, would be uh, significantly more difficult. So yeah, for for situations like this, uh, I, I do definitely recommend using 3D, just not to kind of waste that time that doesn't really need to be wasted. And uh, yeah, uh, I also uh, photo bashing and uh, take a ton of photos uh, to um, uh, use as reference. So for example, here uh, is an example uh, what I did with the illustration of Dandelion. So uh, parts of, uh, so yeah, the, this illustration uh, has photo bashing, it has 3D, it has painting, so we basically uh, to finish it, I, I need I needed to use everything I uh, I knew. <laughs> this is a, like a short tutorial how to be in Yasker for two minutes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, basically I I, I uh, ask one of my uh, coworkers, uh, the lovely Rudy, <laughs> posing here, uh, uh, to uh, grab some photos. Uh, because here the gesture and the um, expression was super important. So, uh, uh, for example, in this illustration, uh, the hands, the face are heavily photo based. Uh, a lot of uh, the clothing is uh, uh, 3D, uh, and the background, uh, it was less important, is hand painted. So, yeah, <laughs> sometimes you need to use everything to be able to deliver the illustration. And another example of uh, in a similar thing uh, is the next one. <laughs> uh, here, um, I, uh, uh, in this one, I had, um, uh, I was really uh, strained for time. So uh, we needed a dog illustration. So <laughs> uh, we took a friend's dog on a walk, <laughs> took some photos. And basically, uh, this is uh, also part the part painted part part photo bus. So the background is uh, some screenshots from The Witcher. Uh, the dog uh, is uh, uh, partially uh, painted, partially photo bashed. And yeah, basically this this is the result. Uh, uh, too bad I didn't have that much time to illustration, but uh, still I, I think it turned out decent at least. <laughs> um, yeah, blah, blah. Uh, another thing. Uh, uh, example uh, I, I sometimes do is uh, reuse my own illustrations so if I paint at one skull I can make a, another skull out of it <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah uh, those are uh, the, the few wonderful uh, ways uh, I kind of cut uh, um, down on the time I need to spend on illustration but uh, one part that I would never recommend um, kind of um, uh, trying to um, cheat a lot is the sketch part. Uh, because, um, for example, if you uh, use 3D or photo bashing at the sketch part, uh, usually the illustrations turn super lifeless and super stiff. And I, uh, I, at least my preference uh, is uh, to. Um, at least try to create like uh, more dynamic uh, type of compositions. And uh, at, at least in my experience, is the only real way to do it is to um, finish the uh, sketch part, part by hand. Uh, unfortunately, no real cheats in this part. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, guys, uh, uh, now 
I'll um, uh, try, try to uh, maybe sketch something. Uh, maybe you have more questions because I can rumble and rumble and rumble and explore. <laughs> Okay. Yes, <laughs> we're here. Yep, yep, yep. We don't leave. Sorry, the, the, the ever so uh, awkward uh, transitions. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> Not sure how to transition. <laughs> See, like next, just uh, some, just, just just make a sound. <laughs> okay. <Blah. laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, people actually were curious about how you switch from uh, black and white paintings to the color one. Mm -hmm. So probably a few words about this as well, because I think that's a pretty, uh, how to say, it, the topic which uh, newbies, the beginning artists, are really interested okay. in. So, and here we can click back to our helpful little presentation, because we do have a topic about that. <laughs> ha ha ha! <laughs> Very convenient. Okay, uh, Fog of War, <laughs> it, it works. So you can easily do stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I can show you on the presentation. I can can, can I, uh, show you uh, huh? this or... yes. presentation. So uh, uh, there are uh, two ways I usually uh, start. Uh, um, uh, in there are uh, two approaches I usually use in uh, starting to uh, put color into the illustration because um, just painting manually in the color of the illustration can be uh, absolute pain in the ass. So um, uh, usually I uh, put, uh, um, you know what, maybe it will be easier if I show you in Photoshop, not in presentation. Yes, it will be. Wait, let, let's put some random tones. So darker, lighter, whatever, whatever. So, uh, so uh, uh, usually I would uh, pick um, some uh, solid color layer, uh, put it on over the whole image, um, uh, go uh, put the opacity down to maybe like 30, 40, maybe 50%. And uh, put it uh, in the uh, mixing layer. Uh, I will put it to difference. And what that this layer does, uh, it um, pushes the your tones into um, uh, it pushes uh, all of the dark tones you have in the picture into the uh, color that you picked, and uh, all the um, light uh, areas into the complementary color. Of the one you pick, and uh, what you basically you can um, uh, really simply um, can I, uh, see uh, super simple uh, color um, compositions uh, that will be natural, naturally um, pleasant to die because those are just complementary. And what's uh, very important, it won't mess up uh, your uh, values. So, uh, for example, if I have base like this, so uh, maybe I want the lights to have this sickly greenish tone and to have uh, shadows uh, kind of in this reddish area, uh, I might uh, mess uh, with it uh, a bit more uh, uh, by uh, going Again, uh, image, uh, uh, adjustment, uh, replace color. Uh, and what uh, replace color does, uh, you can pick uh, one color uh, on your image, uh, select the fuzziness, basically the range uh, uh, you, you want to be able to edit. And then you can uh, edit out a single color uh, in your picture. So uh, um, if you have uh, values properly put into your image. Uh, you can quite easily uh, put a simple uh, color composition. So uh, you can uh, change the hue, you can change the uh, saturation, and uh, you can even mess with the lightness. So uh, basically, uh, with a few rounds of this process, uh, I have a nice base that later I can, uh, for example, put a local color in. So then I can start painting in 
uh, like the, the color of the clothes or something like that. And usually I'll do just the, that just on color or on overlay layer. And basically, uh, step by step, uh, I um, I am able to paint in uh, the color, but I don't have to paint all of the colors in the image. So, for example, uh, here in the um, the presentation, um, uh, I had an example of uh, some hounds. So they were super um, easy to uh, um, paint in the colors because there, there is not much local colors. So uh, here I just uh, took a um, different mask, uh, um, pick the colors, uh, replace uh, the um, highlights, and make them more saturated. And uh, you can see from kind of this base uh, of color that uh, takes literally left, like a few seconds to uh, filter in, uh, you can start uh, manually adding uh, some uh, uh, local colors, like playing with saturations, uh, just making it more alive. But uh, it's not as hard as trying to paint everything just by hand. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but basically that, that's why I do it. Uh, uh, it kind of allows me to uh, separate separate the two um, difficult uh, stages of uh, values and colors, and still not spend a huge amount of time on doing that. And uh, another way to uh, do it is basically gradient maps, um, uh, which is very similar to the uh, color uh, technique. Uh, it just uh, allows you to um, uh, basically uh, automatically put more than just two colors uh, into your picture, but gradient maps uh, uh, use a very similar uh, method so uh, basically uh, they color in they put in the color by um, picking the uh, tone ranges and uh, bleh, 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 oh, chaos 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 everywhere so uh, yeah that that's are the two uh, base methods uh, i use for uh, coloring in the uh, grayscale images uh, in a way that it doesn't kill me, <laughs> but it's uh, still uh, time efficient, I guess. Um, well, <laughs> um, uh, that was this sound, yes? <laughs> that is <resolved>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh. the sound. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's no. uh, like, like swearing in Russia. Oh no, oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, that okay, sounds so, like so, yeah. <laughs> ah, th th that that's that's the problem with uh, uh, language barriers. You never know <laughs> with the sound you make. <laughs> Not the swear words. Uh, we'll I make it. You know, know, we'll just add some um, uh, what's for like ding noises, and it will would sound like you're cursing someone at this point. So I'll be more. Not even girl. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you repeat? <laughs> I uh, will just add some noises, I mean the sound effects, over your blurping, oh. <laughs> making the sounds, and that will sound as if you are cursing. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> too late, too late. I'm joking, <laughs> just joking, don't worry. <laughs> but actually that would be funny. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, maybe you guys have any more questions? Yeah, uh, about the I, I think that we talked about the colors, but I don't know uh, about the composition and probably there was uh, some guessing about the artists you were inspired by. So a few oh. words about inspiration and composition, probably. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so um, um, uh, I, I guess um, I, I uh, separate the artist I'm inspired by by the kind of. Um, fine art uh, historic artist and the uh, current uh, artists working in the industry. Uh, so um, I, I, I guess um, when I was uh, uh, just learning about the work of art illustration for the video game industry, uh, I discovered uh, two artists who were like super big inspiration for me. And uh, one of them, uh, uh, um, called uh, Johannes Voss uh, because this was the 
first time I, I seen uh, this kind of super, um, on one hand, painterly and uh, super uh, fresh style, but uh, delivered in a super um, tasteful, realistic manner. It's hard to describe. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, super huge inspiration. And today uh, is a huge inspiration for me. Uh, I wish I could uh, be. I, I, I wish I would be able to uh, achieve this level of brushwork he does uh, at some point. Uh, another uh, artist that I uh, uh, discovered uh, early uh, in my career and I have a huge amount of respect, uh, 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 Dre Valin. Um, uh, he works much more uh, the movie industry right now, uh, but uh, again, uh, this one of the uh, first artists that made me uh, realize that uh, digital art, uh, a real career choice that you can uh, support yourself in that way, uh, can be a, <laughs> a real job, basically. <laughs> and can I, wonderful uh, collaborative pro process between artists. Uh, so, yeah, I, I guess um, I, I would say those two are the artists that uh, when I'm thinking about uh, what made uh, um, choose this career and um, can I, uh, give me the first most important push to be more serious about my artwork and not just not treat it just a kind of easy, simple way to make some uh, additional money to college, basically. <laughs> and yeah, so, so yeah, I would say th those two. And of course, there are uh, many historic artists. Uh, uh, I was uh, before I ever uh, realized uh, that something like digital <laughs> even exists. Uh, hmm. I said, for a, a creation. I, <laughs> I, I guess uh, I really love the uh, pre realized movement. So, um, uh, again, um, something uh, more more realistic. I guess I will uh, gravitate to uh, that side uh, artwork, but uh, uh, very inspired by uh, fairy tales and those um, you know uh, magical enchanting moods, <laughs> this kind of stuff. Um, I guess. Uh, Oh, uh, and uh, another uh, artist that uh, I, I guess would be a shame not to mention from the uh, contemporary uh, digital artist would be Simon Lundhag. Lundhag. <laughs> not sure how to pronounce uh, his name, but uh, uh, the guy who created his Tales from the Loop and uh, things flat, so um, like the super heavy, moody um, pieces with a bit futuristic uh, twist, uh, but uh, not fully sci fi, just very grounded, very, um, yeah, I would say like super grounded uh, to reality uh, and yet futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so I, I guess now the noise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I'm actually a bit surprised because when you were talking about uh, how you became an artist and stuff, you said that you were learning for architecture mm -hmm. and you were studying a lot of geometry, perspective, you know, building stuff and that you had to uh, study a lot to know the anatomy of the humans and animals. 
And people say that you have a, li a really nice dy dynamic in your pictures. And now we see this uh, composition with two werewolves uh, probably fighting. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's look like they have some grudge against each other. <laughs> so uh, probably some tips on how to make your illustrations more dynamic, more lively, about gestures. Maybe you suggest some books or, I don't know, some something to watch, to study. Uh, mm -hmm. to you know to level up your skills in in dynamic composition hmm. okay so um i i would say that the key of to creating a dynamic composition uh, is making things really simple so uh here uh in the end you'll have like super simple situation that is uh yeah, yeah. oh okay so uh, my cat Photoshop. Uh, so you'll have like super uh, situation when you have slanted uh, horizon and uh, a big form uh, in front and a uh, simple uh, form uh, in the back. So uh, you'll have like a super um, clear, um, um, uh, I guess, hierarchy of shapes. So you have, uh, you'll have kind of um, everything pulling you uh, into the direction of the uh, world that is further away. Uh, later, uh, I, I might try to uh, kind of uh, give it more of the wide lens feeling. So I either try to paint parts or just like um, think if maybe just sorting it. Uh, a bit uh, to uh, replicate the white uh, angle lens will uh, make it, um, I guess, more dynamic and link. Um, uh, so um, we, we can again uh, can uh, check out uh, the ever so helpful presentation that <laughs> uh, because we have uh, a bit about. Uh, um, creating a, a, a dynamic compositions. So for me, uh, the key of creating dynamic compositions is keeping things super simple. Here, um, you have uh, basically one character performing one simple action. So the world is pushing a dude into the ice and uh, everything uh, is pointing down like an arrow. Uh, in the middle one, uh, Geralt is shooting out planes and uh, everything again is pointing to single point, uh, kind of, um, enhancing skill link. Uh, kind of the same with the uh, riot uh, girl jumping through branches. Everything is. Uh, um, sorry for interrupt. Uh, some problems here yes. so sometimes disappear. Uh, can you make the microphone a <laughs> little bit louder? Uh, a little uh, bit louder, yes. And okay, uh, does it work better now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because uh, it's maybe problems with Discord, because uh, Discord uh, don't catch your voice, and you're a little bit, oh. uh, little bit. When, okay. when you, yeah, for for away from the microphone, so. Okay. Uh, to be yeah, honest, relax. It, and <laughs> it might be my fault. Uh, I am kind of uh, animated, so when I talk, I kind of jump around. <laughs> No, no, that's 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 fine. Uh, it's just so that we c could hear you clearly. Okay, so uh, whenever there is an issue, uh, let me know, and I'll try to I don't know, kick my computer because I <laughs> that's all I know. Don't okay. do that. <laughs> don't do that because previous microphone is uh, is broken. Don't kick your computer. Good point. Good point. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so. Um, Continuing with the dynamic compositions, I guess, and not focusing about uh, how much I suck uh, with computers. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's quite embarrassing. Um, uh, okay, so um, basically uh, here you have uh, yeah, it, the point illustrated clearly. So uh, those compositions are um, dynamic uh, because um, kind of in essence, they are uh, insanely simple. They just point you to, into one direction, and uh, uh, I, I try to make 
every element of the picture kind of uh, um, make the direction of action I picked uh, 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 even even more pronounced. And uh, I guess uh, the best kind of uh, medium to uh, try to um, understand uh, uh, dynamic compositions, uh, I would say, is uh, animation. Uh, because uh, in uh, animation, um, uh, animators really try to uh, uh, convey uh, usually uh, a very beautiful, elegant lines of movement. And uh, for me, that uh, always was uh, very helpful. Uh, I, uh, I own few books with just uh, keyframes from uh, different movies and uh, keyframes from animation, just kind of to study how, how those guys uh, were able to figure out um, the dynamism. <laughs> in the image. <laughs> and uh, yeah, another uh, great reference, uh, uh, if you want to uh, can I get your mind accustomed to dynamic positions, uh, are obviously comic book, uh, because those guys are uh, masters of the craft of uh, conveying the movement. And usually they are able to convey it uh, um, very readable and uh, approachable ways. So uh, yeah, uh, basically th there's there is no lack of uh, very talented uh, artists that specialize in dynamic compositions. And uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, that that's, that's the way uh, I was able to apply that to my artwork. Just just studying the masters. Kind of hard to uh, reinvent the wheel on your own. <laughs> That's that's a cool word. <laughs> that's sketching. <laughs> yeah. So what we're doing right now is just 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 uh just can you tell a bit more why you moved the verbals like the way you did like again in terms of composition? Because um, I think that people will be okay, curious okay. to, so, to um, explain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, basically, um, since uh, we're live streaming and. Uh, um, uh, I, I decided to uh, pick a, a composition that um, will be readable fast uh, after I start um, sketching. So uh, this is uh, kind of a basic uh, setup uh, uh, for um, an either of a frame of a movie or an illustration. So two opponents facing each other. Kinda, it's kind of kind of hard to get more um, classic than that, and um, it's um, uh, I guess uh, uh, I decided to uh, put the camera uh, low to the ground uh, uh, because that uh, helps to convey the menace of the creatures. Uh, because then uh, can I communicate uh, to the viewer that. Uh, you're uh, something small on the ground, just barely uh, think your uh, head out uh, for the grass, and here are the, the two huge monsters facing off each other. So it, it will uh, help to uh, kind of create the mood. Later, uh, I might uh, want to maybe already uh, start to think about the uh, light setup. So another uh, kind of classical thing I could do is like put a big ass behind one of the uh, werewolves and just you know uh, lit it with um, uh, this uh, kind of uh, rim light just coming behind him um, and uh, kind of start to think what I would like to do for a background so I guess the the easiest thing to do would be to put a suggestion of a forest behind him and uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess uh, this is kind of uh, effective, um, yet not super complicated uh, position, uh, because it, it kind of uh, um, 
it has few elements that are, are uh, not super complicated to uh, make them work, but uh, leaves you enough um, wiggle room that you can make it more interesting. So, for example, uh, now I see that uh, the uh, werewolf uh, on the front uh, is looking kind of flat, so maybe I would like to spread uh, his legs a bit, so he's kind of um, so I can. Uh, um, uh, play more with the uh, fish eye kind of lens uh, if I have uh, some element of him closer to the camera, but then he's kind of starting to fall over, so I would have to figure out what to do with the second leg. And now I see that I don't like the idea. <laughs> A lot of it is kind of um, uh, trying and failing <laughs> and trying again and hoping that the, 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 the next uh, idea will work. And uh, in this kind of composition, if I uh, Basically, uh, just uh, like two um, uh, very um, soft uh, biological uh, shapes. I don't need to really uh, draw the perspective lines. Um, if you are kind of starting artist, it might be helpful to just um, help yourself with some uh, uh, just perspective guides to uh, kind of uh, help you uh, stay focused and. Decide what, what will be the um, uh, focal point. And uh, uh, I, if I decided to, for example, um, uh, make it a, a scene happening in the day, uh, maybe I would keep the uh, perspective uh, read to maybe help me um, sketch in some uh, serious, uh, serious. Uh, uh, Fluffy, fluffy clouds. Just, just, <laughs> yeah, just relax. Don't, don't be nervous. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I uh, kind of scatterbrained. <laughs> few uh, thoughts uh, ahead, few thoughts behind. Yeah. I know that that everything is fine. It's quite clear what you're explaining. So just yay. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, another way uh, I could try to uh, kind of. Um, um, make the um, feeling of the composition harder. I, I uh, maybe uh, try to paint in clouds in a way that they maybe also follow the perspective. But I like this idea less than huge kind of world. Uh, and anyway, this is still far away from the stage that might be uh, useful. So. Uh, usually, when I sketch, uh, uh, my uh, sketches look uh, very messy at the beginning, and I uh, usually just sketch a layer, a solid layer, layer over it, and basically um, painting uh, another uh, layer of sketch, maybe uh, detailed uh, time, just. Layer of a layer. Uh, at some point, uh, I arrive uh, line art that is clear enough for me to use. And uh, again, as I previously mentioned, um, it really um, the level uh, of detail I put sketch really depends on the situation. So if I uh, draw something for myself, usually the sketch will be have all the necessary elements, uh, so, uh, the basic composition, uh, basic anatomy, but may maybe I won't bother with uh, painting in, um, I say, uh, details of clothing, uh, super fine, or make uh, um, decisions about, um, I don't know, just, just uh, a little details background, but if uh, I know that somebody else has to uh, look at the sketch, uh, prove it. I uh, usually much more detailed in the approach. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, we have just um, another question about the details, and I think it's kind of re related to, to the composition we have right now, mm -hmm. about the focus and how to add the right amount of details to the illustration for it uh, to look either... Um, for it not look either empty or overloaded. So a lot of beginners just add, you know, quite a lot, uh, 
amounts of details, objects, I don't know, patterns to the illustrations. Mm-hmm. Or else it just makes some really basic stuff and indeed it looks empty or they don't know where to put the the focus point. Mm-hmm. And here we see that one of the werewolves, like you really see the that they're going to fight each other. Again, the focus on the werewolf uh, on the background, the, the, I don't know, probably will have a blood on this uh, oh. poor claws. Yeah, we, we see in front of us. So uh, what's the right, um, uh, not, not the pipeline, but uh, how would you suggest to, to, to work with the deta- details and um, I don't know, what's, what's, what's the proper words? How to, I hope that you ex- uh, understood what I'm trying to uh, say I, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I get what, uh, what <laughs> yeah. you're trying Sorry. to say. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Was, uh, no, 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 no. Said it, uh, I, I understand perfectly <laughs> what the question is. Uh, okay, so uh, in general, um, the uh, truth is that detail is not really your friend when you're trying to uh, accomplish a realistic uh, effect. Because detail usually will be the part that um, uh, it's the moment that um, um, kind of uh, rats you out that th- this is uh, not uh, a photo, this is real world. Uh, be, uh, so you have to be very strategic with where you put the detail uh, uh, because you uh, cannot feasibly um, make the whole illustration detailed. And to our friendly <laughs> little presentation again, because examples of that also. <laughs> uh, uh, so here are some examples of my illustrations that usually would be described as pretty detailed pieces, uh, when in fact, the areas of uh, detail are um, relatively small when it comes to the um, general um, illustration. So uh, if you really um, pay attention to those illustrations, uh, none of them have um, very detailed backgrounds, for example. Usually uh, they are uh, either gradient, uh, they are a bunch of dots, uh, there are some ocean blur uh, branches. So uh, those are really not detailed background. And uh, in fact, uh, when I tried uh, painting in more detail uh, in some of those backgrounds, the less realistic the illustration looks. Uh, because this is not really how your eyes see the world. Uh, usually uh, you see uh, you know, a, a very small sliver uh, of the the thing that you see is actually in focus and uh, just your brain puts it together uh, in such a way that kind of seems more um, the bigger area is in focus than it uh, actually uh, physically is. So it, it kind of works, it's kind of a good idea to um, replicate that uh, in illustrations. So uh, usually uh, I put uh, uh, I cannot decide on the sketch phase where I will be putting uh, the detail and uh, where the majority of the time on the illustration will go. So uh, for the most part, uh, the obvious uh, areas will be detailed. So face and uh, hands, because th- those are the two that um, your eye gravitates to. And uh, uh, sometimes it will also be some uh, items of clothing or some interesting parts on the monster. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't try to uh, overly detail everything um, once because it's just uh, not time efficient if you want to uh, make art a living. And two, it actually does not make your illustration more, uh, uh, more realistic. Um, another uh, kind of uh, interesting tip that um, uh, I learned from uh, one of the artists to the project, uh, his name uh, is Mark Madej, a very talented guy. Um, he once told me that something that uh, kind of struck me uh, with, uh, I never uh, thought about it, but uh, uh, usually, um, you won't be able to uh, perceive uh, the equal amount of uh, detail 
both uh, in light and in the shadow in the same illustration uh, and or in the same photo or uh, in the same um, kind of thing that you're looking at. So uh, it's, um, if you try to um, overly, uh, maybe that's uh, uh, the good example will be um, the bottom row, uh, second to last, uh, the dryad picture. So here the I put the detail only uh, in the shadow parts and the uh, light uh, areas are overburned and they are not detailed at all. They are basically a, a solid color. And if I try to, uh, for example, uh, tell the hair in the light more, uh, I don't know, may maybe uh, painting um, or something in the light, I would, um, it would not make the illustration more realistic. It would uh, kind of just confuse your eyes. So uh, that's another thing that uh, it's actually um, good to consider uh, is uh, site if you want to uh, paint the areas of shadow or the light in your image. So if you want to put a detail uh, in the light, so uh, I would uh, example of the uh, detail in the light would be the uh, picture of the uh, leopard or Panthera, uh, the black kitty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, here uh, I painted the light uh, areas as detail, and what's in the shadow is basically solid black. If I wanted to uh, kind of uh, lighten up the uh, dark areas of shadow, uh, I, I would just create the feeling of more flat image, not more realistic image. So. Uh, basically, um, I guess my point would be that you kind of have to be smart with what you uh, um, want to uh, make make detailed, uh, because you cannot um, feasibly uh, detail everything um, uh, equally. And uh, not, basically, neither should you, because uh, um, if you're stylizing, that that's just not a great idea, and if you're uh, trying to make something photorealistic, it's not the way your eye sees the world anyway, so also not a great idea. Um, uh, I, I guess, uh, for example, if you uh, think about classical uh, art that uh, in a way very detailed, uh, but doesn't make it realistic, would be uh, Bruegel. Uh, like super uh, detailed illustrations and Paintings, so obviously beautiful ones, but uh, I would never uh, describe them as um, realistic. And for example, I guess from classical art, I would say Caravaggio. Those uh, images are very precise about where um, he, um, what he put uh, in the light, what he put in the shadow, and uh, and they feel way more realistic uh, because of the. This Passiveness, uh, I would say, the artist. So uh, yeah, so for everybody uh, uh, trying to go for uh, the uh, realistic feeling of images, just don't kill them with detail. More detail, better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the guys in the chat uh, asking to say that you're Wason, so just cheers. <laughs> yeah, we we have about half an hour, so guys, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask them below in the chat. Again, you have all the links for Anna's art station in the description below. Art station Acreon. I, I think you can find her. It's it's the same for your Instagram, right? It's and the same it's, for everything. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's the same. <laughs> so. I don't um, complicate it. it. I don't complicate. It. Yeah. Uh, probably, we should, yeah probably. probably we should. Yeah. Uh, probably we should spend uh, some time on the on the coloring or I don't know values. Or we just again. I mean, on which step we are here. I don't think that we'll finish this uh, sketch in the next thirty minutes. But <laughs> would be very hard. But uh, okay. So. Uh, can put in uh, some basic values to you know, give you an idea of what I, I have in mind for when I'm starting this kind of illustration. So uh, obviously, um, uh, 
way and uh, of putting in values is um, picking um, uh, the, the, sh the characters and shapes that will be in the front picture probably should be uh, the darkest and uh, progressively uh, getting um, uh, further uh, uh, into the illustrations, uh, things will be uh, more uh, washed out and um, lighter and uh, less contrasted. So uh, this is kind of a basic technique uh, that uh, allows you to um, convey space in illustration. And uh, uh, even though it's uh, kind of um, a very basic thing, but uh, a lot of artists, um, even though uh, they they, uh, they know about this rule on the intellectual level, they kind of uh, let, let it slide, um, which makes, uh, I, I mean, of course, there's always a license, whatever the hell you want with <laughs> your picture. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you're, uh, if your goal uh, is to uh, create something um, that feels kind of grounded in reality, it's probably a good idea to be very strict uh, about values you put in the image. So um, really keeping those shapes in front uh, darker, more contrasted, just uh, washing them out, uh, get, go further into the image. So uh, we'll put... Uh, Simple uh, values uh, rules, and we can kind of uh, mark. Um, I think we'll uh, have enough time to uh, uh, kind of put in the, the simple light and simple colors, so uh, it will give you the uh, idea where like to image such as this. So yeah, the the dude in the very dark. The doggo further in the back, lighter. Do, 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 do. And this is the sound of silence or a uh, sound of any no no no, uh, no 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 uh, uh, I'm Sorry, um, just uh, kind of. I know the drawing about speak, it's and, uh, pretty difficult. Uh, uh, <laughs> I am a simple creature. I, I, I move hand, I cannot talk. <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, uh, if you guys have maybe uh, any questions, this is a good part, uh, a good moment to. <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, as far, uh, I, of course, it's uh, hard to uh, guess the future, but uh, uh, so far I see a uh, huge demand for concept artists, uh, the, especially for uh, the more senior ones. The positions uh, some companies are really hard to fill, uh, fill in with, uh, uh, which yeah, basically with um, uh, advanced concept artists. So uh, I definitely um, uh, say that um, uh, this is a viable uh, career choice. And uh, so far, I don't really uh, see us being replaced <laughs> or push, pushed out of the industry. Uh, definitely uh, more um, uh, AI-based solutions are coming. So there are uh, I, I see every year there are uh, more and more um, kind of uh, automated solutions for creating start being introduced. So uh, I, I would not be surprised uh, if uh, in a few years we would uh, kind of have no choice but to uh, implement uh, some uh, uh, AI elements in our work workflow. So just some parts of the Especially concepting process definitely can be uh, given away <laughs> to the computers. So um, uh, uh, definitely parts of the uh, photo bashing process definitely uh, generated um, environment. 
this, uh, all, all the things that uh, we definitely uh, can and will be assisted uh, by by uh, different kinds kinds of technology. and um, uh, I, I would say that yeah I, I am looking forward to those changes uh, I think our industry definitely have to evolve because um, uh, I mean uh, I've been doing I've been working video games for about uh, six seven years right now and uh, the industry uh, just uh, across those uh, seven years uh, changed pretty dramatically uh, different games uh, popular right now different developers you know, on the top than they were seven years ago. Um, yeah, it's hard to predict the future. The only thing I think I guess you can do, kind of always try to, uh, to uh, stay on top of things. And uh, yeah, update your uh, software skills. Mm -hmm. so I, I guess that's the most, um, um, I, I would say that, that that's the biggest reason uh, artists might problem adapting. Okay. Yeah, so maybe sketch uh, an hour, <laughs> many will not do it in 10, uh, 10 hours. So you many times said you, you're lazy and showed some secrets. Our viewers love that stuff <laughs> and tricks for artists and stuff like this. Do you have those that you didn't show? The, the tips, yeah, maybe some, uh, maybe some favorite. share with us, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I, I guess I, I, I acquire some new uh, skills and let's say um, uh, quality of life <laughs> and hunters uh, as an artist uh, every day. That's the reason I really like working um, not uh, an outsourcer, but video. So we can kind of uh, with other artists kind of uh, brainstorm how some um, Parts of the uh, process can be uh, made more efficient. It can be approached uh, in a different way. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure if I was to uh, put uh, a list the way I create artwork in a year, it would be significantly different than the, the way, for example, uh, put together this year. Uh, and I, I think that's kind of what you have to do to do your job well just not to get complacent and uh, create the same kind of uh, artwork and same kind of 10 20 years yeah basically constantly learning and evolving is the way i guess <laughs> okay one more question please uh, uh so <laughs> Okay, uh, how do you think, uh, what skills do you think a modern 2D artist needs in the 21st century? Because, uh, you know, uh, the many artists, uh, the beginner artists now just uh, try to learn how to draw and they don't learn free and stuff. Uh, how do you think, what skills they need now? Um, I would say uh, you definitely need 3D. You don't need... Um... Uh, you don't need to be able to uh, uh, create a complex model uh, on your for your uh, on your own. You don't need to be able to, you know, uh, finish uh, a whole a creature uh, model in SketchUp uh, if you don't feel like uh, you want to do that. But you definitely need um, at least some very basic. Uh, so um, uh, I mean, uh, the the 3D software is getting more more approachable. And more there. So basically, I would say uh, just even if you don't feel like it, uh, uh, open Blender once in your life, it's not that scary. <laughs> uh, and uh, 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 personally, I know uh, of a concept artist who was able to whole of his career just based uh, in. Just doing 2D exclusive. Usually, 
Some people uh, are more uh, heavily uh, 2D based, some are uh, more 3D based, some photo bash, some uh, very different things. Some have their own photo studios, but usually it's hard to stay um, relevant uh, kind of job if you know only one thing. You kind of need to be diverse. So yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid of 3D. You don't need to be a master. Just just be competent with um, basics, <laughs> basically. Okay, that's great, Alice. <laughs> Did you hear that? Like Alice? Was it like help or it's like ha? Huh, got it. No, no, no. <laughs> it's now. like I'm help just you. trying to. Yeah, you know, just. <laughs> you know, very angry, Alice. I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard that too as well, right? <laughs> Alex, what's going on? Why, why are you <laughs> angry? <laughs> yeah. uh, that's not what I'm angry. It's just help me, please. <laughs> I'm screwed on. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just follow a more simple way. I'll just uh, read the questions from the chat because we have about 15 minutes left. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably try to um, yeah answer those. I have to say I'm a big fan of Anna's work and I'd like to know how is Anna's study approach when she needs to study some top now and back when now and back then when she was an art student. So painting from Daniels, for example, like your learning approach, how uh, probably how often do you face like in your art now when you like you said they lead current arts, right? Mm -hmm. Just just so, so, sorry if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. yeah, so. Uh, how do you approach in learning new stuff in art? How often do you experiment, probably? Hmm. Um, I, I would say I experiment pretty much constantly. Um, uh, I, I guess um, sometimes uh, it's hard for me to answer the question because usually people expect uh, that I'll have books or tutorials I would like to recommend. But usually what I do is Kind of um, inspired by other artists or something happening in the world. And for example, uh, if I find artists that uh, I think is super, um, it's a huge inspiration, uh, I don't try to find tutorials that person. I usually try to backward engineer <laughs> what they are doing uh, on my own. Uh, so um, to be honest, I, I think about careful observation and uh, uh, just, just uh, you know, um, really thinking and trying to memorize what you're seeing. So, uh, kind of not um, lots of people have the habit of kind of mindlessly looking at things, and uh, they have uh, very poor uh, visual libraries. So, what I try to do is, you know, when I'm looking at, at somebody else's. I'm looking at something beautiful going on in the uh, real world. I really try to keep it in my mind uh, in a conscious way. So just not like oh, a bird flew away or like uh, um, I'm going to leaves. I, I really try to analyze what's happening so I can later uh, use it in my work. So it, it's kind of a hard way of recommending uh, as a way of learning but is that's kind of me that and of uh, course kind of being surrounded by other artists so just looking <laughs> at what uh, they are doing what they are creating even without the explanation but just kind of familiarizing myself yeah uh, that and uh, kind of Classical, uh, I, I go to live drawing class <laughs> just, just to not um, get, um, kind of not, not to ever forget a uh, traditional way of drawing. Just uh, sometimes uh, when you uh, a long time with digital uh, art, your feels very digital. It's hard to, hard to explain. Like, uh, Traditional touch for me is 
important to kind of keep, not. And I think very ram rambly. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. Sorry for interrupting. I just want to say that uh, to to ask uh, to clarify if you uh, make traditional art nowadays. How how often do you? I, um, I I know because some artists they just go for plein air at some point, just take sketchbooks everywhere they go themselves and drawing while waiting for a coffee, something like that. Do you have such habits or it's just nah? Oh, oh you say you're lazy. Ha ha ha. So probably I know the answer. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, 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 I, I'm not one of the artists who keeps their sketchbook everywhere they go. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I do. We create a few traditional pieces or uh, sketches every month. Uh, basically, when, whenever time's allowed, allows, I, I like to down draw some brush pens. Uh, I post some of those on my uh, social media. Just, uh, I, I know that there is something uh, different about uh, creating traditional artwork that I, I think is very, very necessary to keeping your digital work um, decent <laughs> in a way. So uh, I don't create a crazy amounts of uh, traditional pieces, but yeah, I, I don't allow myself to uh, months and months without touching a pencil. <laughs> cool, okay. Uh, just probably a disclaimer a bit for, for everyone here in, in, in for everyone here in the chat, oh my god, on the stream. For those who watch the live translation and for those who will be watching it later, we also have interview with Anna from Artillery Partident. So we are hoping that we'll be able to upload it on the channel at some point in the nearest future. Well, I think it will be ready in <laughs> November, fingers crossed. But again, no promises are made. But yeah, we just need to make some. Uh, what's what's the proper words? I, I'm really sorry. My English not as good today as can be, could be. But yeah. And I think that you answered a lot. Yeah. But I think that you answered a lot of questions and we also made a lot of suggestions, advice for young folks and we'll have some more in the upcoming video. So I think we just need to come up with some funny questions. Uh, we left about nine minutes and we'll just be finishing the stream soon. So I, I, I'd like to go with the question that I pretty like myself. If you would be able to become a god. So what would you do? What would you what would you feel and how would you change the world? Hmm. I mean you have like whoops. I mean you can probably I, I don't know how, how you uh, you know uh, understand this question, but you can answer <laughs> it anyway, like you are the only one or you are become a god in some certain uh I don't know, uh area or <laughs> <laughs> you, you know how it was in Greece. I, I'm I'm really sorry words right now and it's just the end of the hard day so oh. like in Greece they have like a goddess of love for example you can become like this or you can just become the the god of all the earth and you can change whatever you want what would you do um, I mean uh, obviously the only uh, correct answer I mean the god lay waste to the world well, well, what else would you do with the god Help people. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I guess it's a hard for me to. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's not a serious. Mm. I mean, you can take it seriously, but you can also make a joke <laughs> with it. That that's absolutely um, fine. Because if if you I don't mean, like, kind of hard one. to uh, uh, answer it seriously. <laughs> yeah, so much that would uh, would be nice to fix with the world. But with just a, uh, you know, a feeble human brain, <laughs> imagine what what should be the priority. <laughs> I think that's impossible, even for the gods. <laughs> but yeah, so, sorry. So, so yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. Let, let, so let's continue. I would rage quit and just fuck everything up. <laughs> <laughs> 
there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, actually, Alex has another question that he yeah, wants to... Yeah, because to... of uh, tons of fans of Witcher in the chat right now. Uh, so, if you could be in any character from the Witcher, who would it be and why? <laughs> that's that's I don't know if, if it's easier for you to <laughs> to answer but perfect. Hmm. I would want to be one of the crone, uh, uh, the one that uh, has uh, bees coming out of her eyes. That's uh, oh, endless supply of honey. No. <laughs> okay. You like that's... honey? You like honey? Of course. A huge <laughs> crone. <laughs> huge crone. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's yeah, to the point that uh, my, my mind obviously gravitated to the only <laughs> self-sufficient honey producer in the world. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but but uh, in honestly, in honestly, it kind of be hard to be any character in the future universe because that is a harsh universe to uh, occupy. <laughs> I would say <laughs> harsh, harsh word of the Witcher. <laughs> Mm -hmm. okay i think in, in that case like we don't have any more questions i mean probably have a lot of them but again we have only two hours for the stream mm -hmm. so thank you for everyone who was watching us today and will watch us in the future on the youtube channel and thank you anna so much that you agreed for the stream and we know that it was a bit stressful for you because of the cancellation of the previous one, postponing, oh, setting sorry, up all the hardware and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that, no, 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 that happens. I mean, it just, I, I hope that it wasn't, I hope that you enjoyed the stream today as well, uh, as much well. as we did. Uh, of course I did. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing all the cool advices, tips, and stories you shared with us today. And again, Thank you, everyone. See you on the next stream. And it was Anna Podetvorna, a great artist, and your host, as always, Alisa Khadinova and Alex. Elikov. <laughs> Bye. Because I just, yeah, I just realized that I pronounced her surnames in such a funny way. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. Bye.